I'm kicking it back to 2001 with my playthrough of Jack and Daxter. Hope you enjoy the adventures through my childhood that I don't remember very well. Remember to sleep well, brush your teeth, and have a good day. This game is a classic from a time of which many of you may not have been born or a glimmer in your parents' eyes. But then again, that's just me thinking I'm older than I maybe am. This is a game from the PlayStation 2 era that has been uh, re-released on the PlayStation 4 a couple of years ago. And now I'm just getting around to playing it for the first time in a long time. This is Jack and Daxter and the Precursor Legacy, a game of which you, you might not know what this game is or what it meant for the time, what it means now. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose? And why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Rocks talk? Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey, uh, Jack, old Green Stuff told us not to come here. Old Green Stuff tells us not to come here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Huh? Oh, stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? Jack, I think we're in trouble! <laughs> Do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was. Don't tell me. 
Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man. Are you going to keep yapping or are you going to help me out of this mess? I'm going to keep yapping because, in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides... I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there before I turn you both into ferns. Certainly don't want to turn into ferns. So this is Jack and Daxter here on the PlayStation 4, technically the PlayStation 2. Uh, my name is Brian Saviano, otherwise known as Bricks O'Brien, and I'm going to be explaining to you all the things that the little robot here is going to be explaining over the course of the uh, game here. So, uh, what this game is, is what the studio, who makes now Uncharted and The Last of Us and all that, uh, this is what they made, i got to lower this a little bit, this is what they made before they made those very uh, dark, very adult, gruesome games. And uh, I am not as big of a fan of those. I like uh, color and happiness. So I prefer games that look and play like this. And uh, yeah, it's from my childhood. So I played this when I was seven years old. It came out in 2001. So this game is uh, quite, okay, nice. Um, it's a classic from the PlayStation 2. And it's very, it's it's just one of those iconic video game franchises from the PlayStation 2 era. And I thought, you know what? This one I want to play because I haven't played it in a while. And I, I played through all of it as a kid, I think. I don't know if I actually ended up beating the game. I'm not sure. I believe I did. But um, yeah, this is a, a very fun adventure game. Uh, this came out, like I said, in 2001. Uh, that was after they already came out with Mario 64. So this game is kind of uh, fun and colorful in the same way that that game is. But it's very different from it being that because it's a PlayStation 2 game uh, made by Naughty Dog, Sony, and all that. So Jack and Daxter and the Precursor Legacy is the first game. And then really after this game, that's when the, um, the angst started to be a thing and uh, everything got a lot darker. So Jack and Daxter 2 and 3 uh, involve weapons, like like guns, which is like, wow, that's kind of a, a very radical departure from this game. So uh, I am not as big of a fan of those games, not just because of that aspect. That doesn't, you know, bother me as much. They're not like real, you know, guns like that. It's like blasters and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, they're very buggy and they have not aged in quite the same way. 
uh, that this game has. So I can appreciate this game more than Jack 2 and 3 and Jack X, which is a racing game for some reason. I never played that one. So, um, yeah, it's a very, very fun game, and I can't wait to play through it and show you what it's all about. So as you saw from the intro there, Jack, Daxter, a bunch of these precursor orbs, a uh, bunch of these power cells. It's basically the equivalent of power stars in Mario, if you really want to think of it that way. Um, but the unique thing is that it involves eco, which is a, a thing maintained through the franchise. And the eco is all about uh, giving you different abilities. So, like, you know, the blue one makes you go faster. The green one heals you. The red one, I believe, enhances your power. Uh, they all do different things. So we're going to be getting to know each of the different eco in each of the different areas as the game goes on, and it's going to be good. Um, apparently, the game takes like six hours to beat, so it definitely took me a lot longer than that as a kid. We'll see how long it takes me to do this now. Uh, not that I'm in any rush because there's not really any new games coming out right now that I'm super duper excited about. But um, yeah, so there's um, a zero there for the green eco now. I thought I would have more than that, but all right, I guess not. So uh, yeah, we're looking to get all these power cells to get the thing to glide over the, the red lava there and uh, do the thing there. So there's green eco blue, yellow, red, and dark. So I believe that there's four areas to the game. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I forget, but I believe that's the case. And uh, yeah, this whole beginning tutorial area is complete. It's done. We can get out of here and head on to the rest of the game after another cutscene. I guess. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Okay, so uh, this game is rated E, and uh, back in 2001, rated E, I guess uh, developers said more words that not that are not rated E now? I don't know. So if you hear or happen to hear like a uh, a word or two that isn't quite necessarily family friendly. Sorry. Uh, nothing I can do about it. But hey, it says rated E on the box and I don't know. Whatever. So roll with it if you uh, you happen to hear it. You shouldn't hear anything, but you know, you never know. Uh, but yeah. So the whole point is to get all the power cells and all that. Uh, all of these villagers probably have something for us to say and do. Uh, we're looking for scout boxes. We're looking for a whole bunch of different things to do. Um, and I guess that, uh, Daxter likes to talk occasionally. Uh, Jack does not talk at all. Can I actually turn on, uh, captions? Is that a thing? It must be. Uh, game options. No. Play hints off? Because I don't know, I know what I'm doing, maybe? Graphic options. No, aspect ratio, definitely keep that the way it is there. Uh, speech volume. We'll turn that to 50. Yeah, there we go. That way you can actually hear me talk uh, and over that, because, yeah. Uh, so that was me uh, starting up the save. I, I tried booting up the save file the other day just to see if I could do this. So that's good. Um, I Wait, no. Oh, I guess not. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. Okay, cool. So I guess there... Nope. <laughs> the controls on these games are very wonky as well. So, uh, if I get messed up a little bit, then sorry. Uh, that's gonna happen here and there, unfortunately. But, uh, here's a scout fly box. Nice. We have to burst it that way. And, uh, funnily enough for all of you out there, uh, this is actually, uh, Zebra Gamer's favorite video game of all time. In case you, uh, like, uh, tuning into his videos. I, I talked to him the other day, and I said, hey, I might be playing this. And he's like, oh, it's actually my favorite game of all time. I'm like, oh, really? Cool. So I'm uh, happy to play it. Not be not entirely because of him, but I'm like, oh, you know, it's a 
cool little uh, fun fact there. So, yeah, I uh, probably should not be talking over this guy here. Uh, I don't know what he wants. Anyway, uh, well, would you be kind enough to loan your dear old uncle 90 precursor orbs so he can get underway? I would offer you a power cell in return. Okay, so we got to give him precursor orbs. So the precursor orbs, I guess he won't take them now. I don't know. Uh, what's actually really funny is that in this game, these precursor orbs that are over here, uh, they are fairly common. Uh, not like uh, coins in Mario, not quite. But to a similar extent, I guess, that's like the, the only thing that's like similar to it in a way. And in every game after this, the precursor orbs are very rare and very difficult to come by. So it's just a weird difference between the two and the way they operate here. I think there's another one down here. Yes, there is. Look at how smart I am. That's because I can hear the audio, which you probably can as well. Uh, hello, sir. I'm going to allow everyone to talk, so... Yeah. Hey! Little furry dude! Oh, I thought for a moment you were my muse. You're what? Haven't you ever seen a muse before? It's a little glowing squirrel about your size, full of spunk, and crazy as a lark. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt, but with her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Oh, I just hope she's all right. It's worth a power cell if you bring her back to me. Wait a minute! We are not going back to Misty Island! Are we? I don't think I can go there. That's kind of a, a weird one if that's the case. I, I'm pretty sure that's the final area you can go to. I mean, I might be able to go back there, but I'm pretty sure there's a specific order to the game. It's fairly linear, so I don't know how, uh, how much variety I can get out of the game here. Uh, also, this game is old. Obviously, it's is it 20 years old? It's 19 years old. Wow, this game is almost 20 years old. So, can I potentially go back here? Totally not. Yeah, definitely not. All right, no way I can do that. So, his muse is uh, going to have to be there for quite some time because I can't help you with that one. Um, what is unique to this game for this time period is there is a day and night cycle in the game. So, you know how in other video games it goes from day to night? That is a newer feature, I suppose, in this game specifically. Because every game before it, I don't believe had that. So it's pretty uh, interesting there. So here's a bunch of blue eco. Oh, that's a lot. That is quite a lot. Nice. Okay. That worked out very well. All right. Uh, oh, this guy over here. That thing? Oh, man. I miss that thing. All right. I'll, I'll show you that in a hot second here. Let's talk to Farmer Joe. Farmer Joe. Hi. Oh. It's you. Oh, just resting my tired bones. I've been trying to get those unreact cows back into the pen all day. Some strange creatures tried to steal them earlier. You think you could help an old man try to get them back into the corral? All right, get the uh, things back in the corral. You got it, bro. You got it. Go. There we go. Get over this way. So it basically acts as like every single other video game ever. Just leading them right back into here. Um, hopefully they don't leave. Uh, let's hope they don't leave. Um, but yeah, that guy over there, he, he's a trip. That's going to be fun. That's going to be very fun. All right, so basically we're leading the Tauros into here. We'll see uh, how well they can behave and stay in there, you know. But yeah, just lead them through here. So I really enjoy this game. I love the concept behind the game. And every time I think about this game or if it needs like an HD remaster or something like that, I get slightly more heartbroken because more games like this don't exist. Um, Sony makes more, uh, not realistic, but like grittier, more adult games that can sometimes be good and I, I thoroughly enjoy them. Like uh, God of War is really good. But uh, most of the time, like... Um, 
Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us, Uncharted. A lot of games that I have not played, both in my life, personally, uh, even aside from videos, or on videos. Uh, I'm not really gravitated toward those, so I don't really have an interest. And there we go. Nice, they're already uh, all up in there, nice and chill. Uh, old man, it literally took like 30 seconds. How you doing, man? Oh, well done, my boy. You actually got those three bags back into the pen. Now I can sleep in peace. Take this power shell for your trouble. We literally need these to like save the world, and here you are just hoarding them. Basically like the power stars like Toad has and all that. So, um, but they are very different <laughs> in their own way. Uh, the PlayStation trophies are active so you can see them. That is obviously not in the PlayStation 2 or, yeah, PlayStation 2 version. I was going to say PlayStation 1 version. That is not correct. Uh, the PlayStation 2 did not have any of this. So, uh, that's unique to this. Uh, you can actually get the Jack and Daxter Trilogy, and you can also get just this game if you really wanted to. And this is where we're going to be going eventually. I'm just grabbing these precursor orbs because why not? Uh, this whole fire canyon over here leads to the next area. You can't make it through here. It is literally impossible. Don't try it. So we have to go into the jungle and a whole bunch of other places as well. And, uh, yeah. So there's a lot to do. Uh, I'm going to show you this guy up here. This guy's a trip. And uh, <laughs> you'll see why I like him in a hot second here. And, uh, all right. Scout flies. Almost got all the scout flies for the area. That's cool. Uh, I, like there's seven, I believe, in total for each area. So that's... Oh, yeah. There we go. Already rusty on the jumps there. And the controls are obviously a little bit off. You know, it being a game from 19 years ago, it's going to be a little bit off. But that's okay. So there we go. We have, what, 80? 83? Not bad. Oh, there's another scout fly. Cool. So we're missing one. Right? Because there's seven. Yeah, there's seven. All right. So this guy over here is a boss. I was gonna. I, I've never heard a voice like this in any video game before or since this voice. So just listen. Who awakens the Oracle? Wait, one of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. 120 I thought it was 60 okay so I'm gonna <laughs> I used to do his voice pretty well so like it's like a weird like lower like vocal cord thing you gotta like hold on. let me let me try it all right for every 120 breakers <coughs> <coughs> I'm getting old for every 120 bre <coughs> bre oh my god Precursor orbs. Oh. Oh. <coughs> yeah, I can't do it. Oh, I'm getting old. For every 120 precursor orbs. Oh, it's like it's like a real low. Really, really low vocal cord thing, man. Oh wow. That hurts. That really, really hurts. Obviously it's a it's an audio effect on there that's doing that. And not actually. His voice. I thought I heard another scout fly. But man, to, if you want to do that yourself, oh, good luck. Good luck. That is a, a tough voice to do. But yeah, I, I can do it a little bit. A little, little, little tiny bit. But now we're going to go over toward the next area, which is technically the, yep, Forbidden Jungle. Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. So every single area has uh, different scout flies and different precursor orbs and they're all uh, divvied up by section here and I didn't know that that's where the forest is okay so we don't want to go toward there actually quite yet we want to head toward the beach area and so we need 20 precursor orbs that's the wrong way Brian uh, we need 20 20 precursor orbs to go where we need to go um, I guess this is where we need to go. Oh, down here. Okay, cool. Uh, there's always a secret behind the waterfall, right? Oh, we have all 50. Okay, cool. So it tells you when you have all of something, which is good. So there's a uh, 50 accomplished right there. I guess I missed one from the last section, which is not great, but oh well. 